So I mentioned in part one that this was going to be a short video, and as you can see, this certainly did not turn out to be a short video by any means. Uh, my guess is we're probably running on an hour total between part one and part two, but anytime you're playing with vintage computers, it uh, always turns into an adventure. Thanks for watching. All right, so as a follow-up, I went ahead and replaced those two faulty RAM chips. Uh, the fourth and fifth chip, which are main RAM 3 and 4. And then I ended up socketing the uh, next chip, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, number, the sixth chip, which is MRD5, and hooked everything back up. And now, when running the self test, um, one thing that's noticeably different is I no longer have random bizarre characters all over the screen. Uh, we can just hit uh, control reset and go right to a prompt. Sorry for the shaky video. I'm holding it at the camera at the moment and I'm gonna do the self test. And you'll see here that we are gonna fail. I believe this will be an auxiliary RAM failure. You just saw it a moment ago. There goes the color patterns. Hold on a moment. And it's going to give us a memory fail error with an asterisk. Um, and wow, a moment ago we had a different one. And now we have 1110, which is kind of bizarre because that means that um, they're labeled below the chip. So ARD0 here. Okay, so 1110 would be not this chip, would be this, 2, 3, and 4. So the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th, uh, that's a lot of chips, and it didn't give me that result just a moment ago. Uh, let's try running that again. We're going to turn the system on. I'm going to do open and closed Apple control reset. And let's see here what we get. All right, I just fast forwarded us a little and we're back to 1110. So I'm gonna start, I believe, with just replacing that first memory chip and seeing if that clears it up. Um, Cause a minute ago, if you notice when I first started talking, we, we had all zeros in just that second chip, or uh, ARD1. So I'll be back after I replace ARD1. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and replace the chip um, <clears throat> ARD1, which is auxiliary RAM number one, which is the second chip. <coughs> Excuse me. First, I start off by taking my Sharpie marker and just putting lines on the outside of where the pins are because there's so many pins in a row here, it can be hard to distinguish which row of pins you're, you're working on. So you can even draw a line down both sides. And don't worry too much about the, uh, the magic marker. Uh, when we clean up the flux later with the acetone, it's going to take that magic marker right off. And I got all sorts of ways to get that off. It just it's just gonna come right off so but that helps us not make a mistake so first I'm gonna take some liquid flux and I'm gonna oh there it goes <laughs> yeah, like, I working. there we go all right and now I'm just gonna flow some solder some fresh solder onto see even the flux is dissolving a marker but it helps us see what row of pins we're working on uh, soldering irons at 375 if anybody's interested and we're just going to flow some fresh solder uh, onto the pins okay I found that I can run my hot air rework tool at 261 Celsius, 
And I like the auto rework tool because you can use a lower temperature, which is really nice. Um, it gets the whole area warmed up, which can be helpful or harmful if you have uh, uh, ICs in the area. Well, I apologize. I didn't realize that I did not unpause the video and I've already removed the chip. Um, I'll explain quickly what I did. I have my uh, hot air SMD rework tool set on 260 or 261 Celsius because that's what it sets to. I put flux, liquid flux on the pins. I held the tool there until each one of the little legs you could see almost like a pop um, as a, each one of them melts and then I took a small flathead screwdriver and you don't press because you can pull a, a plated through hole out or tear a trace or, or, or lift a pad so I, I just very um, just touched it to see when it was loose when all the uh, the pins were loose and then simply lifted the board an inch or two and dropped it and by doing that easiest way to go the chip just fell right out and and there's the chip so I've gone ahead and put some solder on the uh, on each of the holes so I have something to put my desoldering gun onto uh, let's see here and I'm just gonna go ahead and clear all these holes out I put the tip of the desoldering gun on the hole give it a second to melt pull the trigger and it vacuums the hole out so here we go here's the fun part remember when you use one of these des vacuum desoldering guns you want to run the pump don't just pull the trigger quickly you you want to run it uh, longer one when you put the the tool on the hole and when it's melted you want to give it a good vacuum like that like a whole two seconds maybe and then once you lift off the pad you want to keep this held down for another couple not that long but another couple of seconds the reason why is if you don't the molten solder will get stuck inside the tube and clog your desoldering gun so you want to give it time to pull all the way through up into this chamber where it belongs or you're going to be sitting there uh, unclogging your, your soldering gun very often so uh, also you don't want to move the gun very much especially with a very old board like this you could damage a pad also you want to just get you want to put some solder with your soldering iron first so you have a nice rounded dome so there's something for the tip of the desoldering gun to to make good contact with and then you pull you let off one two you let go then you wait for the hissing sound to stop because you don't want vacuum uh, as you're melting the solder or you'll only suck the solder off the very top of the hole leaving solder in the plated through hole and a clogged hole you're gonna have to put more solder and do it again so you want to make sure you clear it out all the way through the board there you go only 16 pins to go well we're halfway through or so by now okay this one here and, and you don't do them in order you you jump around because you don't want to concentrate too much heat in one spot of the board you want to give the board a few seconds to cool so you don't end up making a hot spot remember the desoldering gun I'm running at uh, I actually have it down to 350 right now and it's working fine so you, you want to you do want to try to find the lowest temperature you can completely successfully clear uh, with so I, I did mess up one it's normal I didn't uh, it didn't vacuum all the way through probably had a little suction still going so we're gonna clear our soldering iron we're just gonna melt some solder into that hole and then we're going to take our desoldering tool again, melt it, vacuum it out. This one has a little bit of solder we're just going to clear up. Problem solved. Take a look. I got 16 nice and clear holes. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that on the 
the camera. Uh, sorry, I'm using my front facing camera so I can see that I'm in the shot. Again, this is really my first hack at videoing this stuff. All right, so here's our chip. It's got a magic marker line. As you can see, uh, the ink is pretty much gone at this point. Um, you know, I made a decision to go ahead and in my little squeeze bottle, instead of isopropyl alcohol, I'm now gonna have uh, acetone. And I'll use the isopropyl alcohol at the bottle because the acetone doesn't have a good dispenser. I mean, this stuff just kinda wants to pour everywhere when you use it. So, now I have it in here. And you'll see that's just gonna melt the junk right off the board. Little nylon brush. Um, easiest way is to put the board at a little incline. There we go. And then just take the brush and brush as you spray some acetone. And there it all goes nice and clean off the board. And cool thing is, this will be dry in seconds. And five more seconds to go on this board will be bone dry. There's the crud. I think this purpley stuff was probably the magic marker. The brown stuff was probably cooked flux. There we go. All good. Okay. Look at the other side. Looks fantastic. Let's take one of our sockets. Uh, let's put that socket right here. Get some solder, get a soldering iron, uh, gonna take, uh, hook up my vacuum line, back to the iron, I'm gonna uh, clean the iron, I'm gonna take a little touch of solder and I'm gonna take it right to that pin. I'm going to take a little touch of solder and take it right to that pin, and then that one, and then that one, bada bing. Okay, now we're going to solder it. Um, here we go. it makes a big difference on the camera but it sure makes a difference to me getting some light in there yeah you don't want to solder the socket in sequentially either because too much heat in a small area can certainly melt the plastic of the socket and these dip sockets absolutely will melt very easily if you're not careful you'll you'll melt uh, one of the pin sockets just right out of it and of course you want to you know properly solder the four corners that you tacked to hold the socket in place. And now we take a better look. Looks good. I don't see anything with any solder joints here. Solder out of the way. Put the board at a little tilt again. Get my brush, get the acetone, and clear off the flux from soldering it. Let's clear off the whole area. Just give that a brush, clean the brush off, have flex all over it. I know it looks like I'm using a ton, but if you look at the bottle, I mean, it's it's almost full to the top. It, it just looks like a lot. But you do want to wash this stuff off, and basically you're using it as a wash. Um, so yeah, that's about it. 
sometimes when you do the, you know, it's important to clean the board because when you clean the board, I can see here a solder joint I don't really like from the previously soldered chip. And I just touch that up. That one looks blobby. So you can see much clearer after you clean That's better. Not so blobby. Okay. Inevitably, when you do this, especially on a board so old, you're going to have bits of the solder mask is just going to come off. Uh, if you notice here, you'll see some silver streaks. And what that is, is where the solder mask came off of the copper trace, you want to take your soldering iron and some solder and you want to tin that copper <clears throat> so that that trace doesn't corrode over time. So that's why you'll see some silver marks. That's not uh, stray solder. That's tinning the, the areas where the uh, solder mask, this green, uh, they used to call, I guess, the coffee, um, came off of the board uh, just from the process of uh, heating it up and soldering and etc. Some schmutz there. There we go. Great. Uh, don't put paper towels on the board. <laughs> You're gonna get bits of. Uh, just get some of that, that residue off of there. It only takes a tiny bit to really wet the surface well. Okay, cool. Done. Get everything out of the way. Three, two, one. Let's put our board back into our... God, I almost called it a Macintosh. Blasphemy. Our Apple IIc. And let's uh, hook her up. You know, where's our video <clears throat> where's uh power oh not yet where's our dc power supply okay let's hook our speaker up so we can hear the most lovely beep on earth and there's our power let's get that out of the way let's turn on our safety all right it's doing a self-test because i powered it up with no keyboard You'll know when I know. <laughs> You'll know as soon as I know. I'm watching on the on the screen myself. There we go. Uh Ram Z P and then it's the second position, one zero. So if we can see that we got Ram uh, with an asterisk, then Z P and then one zero. Well, I have to admit when I make a mistake, and I made a very silly mistake. I was so busy making, uh, focusing on uh, doing a video, I put the, I, I took out the faulty auxiliary RAM chip, put a socket in, and didn't put a new memory chip into the socket. <laughs> so that triggered the... Uh, the additional memory error and now I have uh, gone ahead and placed a memory chip into the socket and I'm very happy to show you the system okay uh, it's right here system okay and uh, I'll show you a, a uh, shot here of the uh, the motherboard okay so here's the two replaced chips this chip was socketed and your the second auxiliary RAM chip ARD1 that's been replaced in this Apple IIc and now in a moment you're gonna see the self-test uh, hopefully complete successfully uh, before I return this computer uh, also have to thank Vince uh, of our computer club uh, floridaretro.com uh, for lending this computer to be repaired 
he thought I was doing him a favor, and I got to make a video. So thank you to Vince for the system to repair. And we now have a system okay from a very sick system that was at least coming up with the Apple II, just wasn't exactly... Uh, <laughs> See no more random characters all over the display. Uh, we'll just do a, another control reset. And uh, let's just, of course, we have to do 10 print. Nope. Oh, can't do that, can I? 10 print L. <laughs> I know what that is. I've got the Dvorak switch uh, pressed there. Uh, let's see, 10 print, I eh, forget hello world, <clears throat> apple to forever, and yeah, you guessed it, 20 go to Twenty, go to ten. List, run, and there we are. Apple two forever, my friends. Take care.